remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook back with you once again, and I know that ordinarily on this show, we normally tackle some pretty heavy-handed political issues most weeks. That's kind of what we do. But this week, I wanted to break from that a little bit, and I wanted to talk about a subject that uh, is, to me, uh, very interesting, but not quite on the level of importance as, say, uh, taxation or defunding Obamacare, the stuff we usually talk about around here. I wanted to talk a little bit about college football. Uh, I am a college football fan, as I've referenced on this show before. And there's been a few things that have come out over the last few months that I found particularly interesting. There's been a lot of stories going around about, say, Johnny Manziel over at Texas A&M maybe taking some money to sign some autographs. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. We've seen all kinds of stuff come out about the University of Miami and some guy named Nevin Shapiro who was paying athletes and providing them with whatever else. We've seen some reports recently on Oklahoma State University about some athletes back in the 2000s that might have gotten paid a little bit for their performance. We've seen some things come out recently about some former players at uh, Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi State that might or might not have received some money from agents during their college days. And if you listen to the Sports Illustrateds and the ESPNs and the media and you hear them tell the story, they would make it sound as though this is such big scandal and Golly, college football, college athletics just needs to be cleaned up. But as a college football fan myself, as a ticket buyer, as a season ticket holder, I don't see what all the scandal is. Even though I know there's varying degrees of validity of all of those stories, assuming they all were true, none of them would really bother me. As a college football fan, the idea or the fact that some player might get paid a little bit doesn't impact my enjoyment of the sport whatsoever. Now let's put this into perspective, shall we? Back when I was in college, I had a couple of jobs that among my duties included representing my university, the University of Missouri. I was uh, an employee of the dorm cafeteria. I uh, gave college uh, campus tours for, for a couple of years. I was a summer orientation leader one year. For all of those jobs, at which, among other things, I represented the University of Missouri, for all of those jobs, I was paid. I didn't get rich. I wasn't living in a mansion. But hey, I had enough to pay for my room and board and maybe pick up a six-pack of beer on the weekends. Well, not beer so much as Natty Light. <laughs> But you get the idea. I got paid for representing my university. Now, these athletes are representing their universities on a far grander scale than I ever could have dreamed of. So certainly, I don't have any problem for them being remunerated for doing it. Now, some critics would say that a college scholarship in and of itself could be and should be considered payment for athletic services. Well. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. I do think that's part of the compensation package. But I would also say that if a school or if a local business or if a local booster or whoever wanted to wished to pay a student more than just the value of their scholarship, then I don't see why they shouldn't be allowed to do so. And I don't see why that athlete should be prohibited from taking that. The root problem is the NCAA. The NCAA has this antiquated and outdated idea of amateur athletics. They have this weird contention that amateurism and athletics is its own value in some way. And i got to admit, I, I've never understood that stance. I've never understood that value ever since I was a kid. So they have this idea that athletes should not be provided anything, should not have anything outside the typical college experience. And in fact, as you look through their uh through their rules and through their statutes you'll see that kind of phrase come up time and again typical college experience but i would argue is there really such a thing as a typical college experience what is that i mean think about it if you've got a university somewhere that has let's say 20,000 students all 20,000 of those students are going to have a completely different college experience than the other 19,999 there is no such thing as a typical college experience. Let me give you a couple of examples. Think about a, uh, think about a computer science major. 
that's working towards his degree in that area, and maybe his buddy screws up his computer one week. So he brings up the computer science major to see if he can fix it. Guy fixes the computer, gets it up and running again. Ah, the friend slips him 20 or 30 bucks. Would we criticize that computer science major for taking that money? Hell no! We'd encourage him to do it. Let me give you another example. Think of an attractive young lady on a college campus who might have the opportunity to do some modeling, maybe for some advertisements, photography, what have you. She might get paid for that. Now, is that something that every other college student would, would have at their availability? Well, no, because only certain students have the attributes necessary to be models. So this pretty young lady would have that opportunity. Other young ladies probably wouldn't. Would we criticize that young lady for taking money while in college for modeling? Of course we wouldn't. We'd, we'd, we'd say more power to them for either the model or the computer science major. Why would an athlete be any different? You know, during media days this summer when the, the conferences would all have their media days, and every, they'd have all the coaches and the conference commissioners talk to the media. Two of those conferences, the SEC and the Big 12, had commissioners that made some pretty pointed comments towards the NCAA. They registered some very clear discomfort and discontent with the organization. And it strikes me that these days, with the money that's now being generated by college football, far more so than the past, those major schools, those major conferences, may start to be getting that financial leverage they need to tell the NCAA where to stick it. Because after all, the NCAA has always been an organization, if you look at their history, they've always been an organization that's put the wishes of the have-nots ahead of the needs of the haves. Well, it might be getting ready to bite them in the butt. Bluntly, the NCAA offers little of value to college football. They do not run college football the way that the NFL runs pro football or the NBA runs professional basketball or anything like that. They are not an umbrella organization that controls college football. That's one of the big misconceptions out there. The NCAA's role is to essentially put together the rule book and determine eligibility of players and not much else. Oh, and occasionally they make stupid rules about tackling and concussions. But other than that, that's about all the NCAA does. They don't do scheduling. They don't negotiate TV contracts. The courts actually said they couldn't do that. They used to try it. They don't run the sport per se. They don't even determine the national champion. None of that is done by the NCAA. So the major conferences could leave the NCAA tomorrow and really not lose much of anything. Now, some of you are going to say, what about the NCAA basketball tournament? Well, that is the one piece of leverage the NCAA has had over the big schools for a long time. But... Since the TV money in college football is getting so big, we may be getting towards a point where those bigger conferences can forego the NCAA basketball tournament and live off that football money. And then what would happen? When you have the big conferences out of the tournament, would the NCAA basketball tournament really be that big of a deal? You'd have, what, 66, 68 mid-major teams? Who would care about that? What would happen there after a couple of years, the NCAA would see their tournaments ratings tanking the other schools are probably put together their own tournament and at some point the tv networks would say hey y'all go to a table you negotiate this out and you work together for the basketball tournament that's what would happen so no harm no foul there the bottom line is this i am not saying that the government should step in and force colleges to pay athletes it's not the government's business none of their concern I'm not even saying that the NCAA should mandate universities pay players a certain amount. I'm not even going there. I'm certainly not saying that college athletes should unionize. I'm not saying any of those things. But all I'm saying is pretty simple. I'm just saying that the NCAA should back off and allow individual universities or even outside parties to make whatever financial deals they wish to make with players if they wish to make such arrangements at all. Some universities might not want to do it. Some boosters might not want to do it. And that's perfectly fine. As with everything else in life, leave it to the free market and let the free market work it out. Remember one thing. We all, all of us who went to college, we all went to college so that we can learn how to best monetize our talents. I know there's high-minded academics that will talk about the intrinsic value of an education and becoming a better human being and all that crap. But that's all bullshit. You and I know it. We go to college to learn how to make money. And sometimes you're in a position where you can start making that money a little bit early. There's nothing wrong with that. It seems to me that prohibiting the payment of college athletes would fly in the face of the most important goal of college, which is to learn how to monetize your talents. 
and make money out of them on the free market. That's why we all go to school. That's why we all put up with that dog and pony show for four or five years. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.